So in this part, I'm going to discuss the relationship between these line integrals and calculating the work done. Now, if you've done any basic physics, or even if you haven't, you might know that, um, that when we talk about the term work done, we, refer, we mean the, the energy expended by a force when applied to an object to move it along a path. Now, the most basic situation that most students have seen is when the path is a straight line from, say, one point to another point, and you have a constant force. Okay, so in this picture, you've got the following constant force. Some particle here is at P, at P. The force acts on the particle and it moves at some distance in a straight line. Okay? Now, some of you may know that the, to calculate the work done, it's just the dot product of these two vectors where you use just the vector PQ. Okay? Now, in a wider context, this thing in brackets is essentially just the dot product of the force with a unit tangent vector in the forward direction. Okay? And that t hat is easy to calculate in this case because we know what the vector pq or the vector u is. Okay, and the vector, the tangential vector will just lie along the, the vector u or the vector v, pq. Now, what happens, and, uh, and this is the main focus of this presentation, what happens when we move along a curve that's not straight? And secondly, what happens if the force is not constant? That, that's a good question. So that's what I, what I wanted to talk about um, now. So in this picture, you've got a curve which is smooth. And some force is acting. And you're moving, for example, a particle from this point along this curve to this point. So let's look at the case when the applied force F is no longer, or not necessarily constant. And we've got this, this curve, this smooth curve here. Okay, well, with a little bit of justification, you can, um, it, it makes sense to define the work performed by F as the line integral of the tangential component along the path. So the tangential component sort of points in the, in the forward direction, or the, the, the direction of motion in, in some sense. Okay, so here the t hat is the unit vector that corresponds to the forward direction. So in this, in this diagram we're going from this point to this point. If we're going from this point the other way, the t hat vector would be spun around 180 degrees. Um, oh, okay, so essentially what we're doing is we are looking at the so called tangential component of the force. And we're integrating that dot product over the curve. Okay, that's all, that's all we're doing. Okay? Now, When we talk about the work performed by F, essentially it's a path integral. So I'm integrating that dot product with respect to the arc length over the curve C. Now we can also write it via this compact form. And if we have a way of describing this, this curve C,
then essentially it's the following um, just integral with respect to t. Okay, so here the r of t is a vector function that parameterizes this curve in the forward direction. Okay? So the value uh, at A and the value at B give you the endpoints. And as T varies between A and B, the, you know, the, basically this, this curve gets traced out. Okay? Okay. So suppose I have a vector field, F, and it has component functions, say, that depend on x, y, and z. Then the work done by this force over this smooth curve from one point to another point for t values is just this. So in other words, you know, if you want to sort of write this out again, it's just the following. Okay, so this is quite an abstract setting, but this is actually, from a computational point of view, very, very um, useful. Okay, so here I've broken it down into steps. Sometimes there's even a pre-step to step one. What you want to do is, first of all, parameterize the curve C using... Uh, a function, appropriate function, R of T. Okay? Now, some of you may go, oh, well, hang on, Chris, I've done physics, and we define the work done by a negative, with, with the, the line integral, but with a negative sign. Yeah, that's when you would, you know, when you would consider, say, a gravitational field acting against, against some other force, okay? So, um, essentially, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. Let's do an example. In this example, we're asked to calculate the work done by this vector field in moving a particle from the origin to this point along the straight line segment joining the two points. Okay, so I'm going to, you know, let's just make A the origin and B 1, 1, 1. Here I've got the IJK notation. You could also write this, as I do, as an ordered triple. Now, one thing that is slightly more challenging about this problem, I mean, it's, it's actually pretty easy to do in this case, but in general, is that you're not given the R of T, the parameterization for the straight line or the, the curve in question. So we have to somehow uh, put the parameterization together for this curve. Okay? Now, sometimes you can memorize these things. That, that's not too bad. Um, but... Let me just show you how to derive it very quickly, just from a very simple diagram. Okay, you've got some point, some other point, uh, A and B. And what you want to do is make sure the parameterization for that line segment starts at the origin A and moves along the curve to B as T increases. Okay, so how do you do it? Well, this, this is an easy, easy example. Suppose P is any point on the line segment. Okay, so, so let's think, let's see. Now you can see that to get the Basically, the position vector of P, it's just a vector that's parallel to the line. Okay? So it's just parallel to the line, and we know, we, we know the vector AB. The vector AB is easy to calculate. It's the vector 1, 1, 1. Okay? But we don't want the whole... Uh, we don't want anything more than the line segment AB. 
So, essentially, using this, this A here for the origin, AP, it's going to be a multiple of the vector AB. So I'm going to introduce this T. What kind of multiple? Well, it's, it needs to go down to 0 and then stretch all the way up to 1 times AB. So your parameter, or variable, T would be between one, uh, 0 and 1. OK? So what then is the parameterization in terms of your position vector? Well, this would just be your R of T. Right? A, B is just you know, 1, 1, 1 minus 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So So if you write it as an ordered triple, it would be like this. Okay, so think of the first as your uh, the first component is x, the second component is y, and the third component is z. Okay, so we've done that. What we want to do is calculate this integral here. Okay, so this is in the sort of parameterized form. So it's just a regular integral involving one variable, t. Okay, well, let's calculate the derivative, ca uh, evaluate our f along our parameterization, dot them together, the dot product, and then integrate. Okay, so uh, let's, let's, I'm just going to calculate the derivative first. So r dash differentiate component wise with respect to t. So the first derivative, uh, the derivative of t is one, and then one, and then one. So you can see here that this derivative is just a constant vector. It doesn't actually depend on t, but sometimes it will depend on t. So f evaluated along our parameterization. Okay, essentially we replace x in here with t replace y in here with t, and replace z in here with t. So I, I'm just, just using this, this uh, triple here I'm going to use. Okay, so t, t squared and t. So pretty simple form. So let's take the dot product, and then we'll knock over the integral. So again, this is a reasonably easy dot product. Oh, I've written them out the wrong way. It doesn't matter, though. OK, so that's that. Yeah, the dot product, it doesn't matter the, the way you write them in. So it's the first component multiplied with the first component, second component with the second component, third component with the th third component, all added together. So you're going to get a 2t in there and a t squared. All right, so last step, set up and evaluate the integral. Now, our limits of integration, A and B, correspond to the T values. Okay, so T is between 0 and 1. And I have this nice, simple integral. So if I integrate that, and then sub in my T values, I'll get 413. 